We're going to begin with a, a hymn this morning, Be Thou My Vision. You are welcome to stand as you are able. You are also welcome to remain seated if that is more comfortable to you. It's Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else but me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my Thou my wisdom and thou my true word, I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord, thou and thou only, the first in my heart, great God of heaven, my treasure thou art. Great God of heaven, my victory won. May I reach him joys, O Lord, son. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Welcome to our time of worship this morning on this beautiful Memorial Sunday and Graduate Recognition Sunday. Could we have better weather? This is beautiful. This is tremendous. Thank you, Lord, for that, that great blessing. Um, we are excited to be here, and we have so many things to um, celebrate. We're going to start, the first part of our service is um, the graduate recognition. Uh, we have one graduate from high school this year. We are very proud of Lydia Foster. And uh, we're going to show you a quick video uh, of Lydia. We have a few pictures put together. We thank uh, Brian and Judy Lee for putting that together and the family for supplying the pictures. So look at a few pictures of Lydia. And then Lydia and Judy Lee will join me up here by the time the video ends. Okay, it's about a minute and 45 seconds. I love that one. I, 
I know you're a dancer, but man, can she get her leg up high, right? That was, that was beautiful, Lydia. <laughs> Um, we have uh, three things we invited you to share. So if you'll stand here, you can take your mask down right. if you're comfortable and share with the congregation a little bit. And Judy, come on up. Hello. <laughs> so one of my highlights from senior year was definitely my senior parking lot prom. And this year they had it in our parking lot, which was clearly different than what they've always done in the past. But it was just a great way for our class to finally get together for an event, and it was a lot of fun. Um, this summer, I will be nannying for a family friend. They have two little boys, so I will be there every single day. And next year, <laughs> I will be attending the University of Illinois in the fall, and I will be majoring in biology. Lydia, congratulations, so exciting. Um, I, on behalf of your New Bethel family, I get to present you with some gifts this morning. And as a member of New Bethel Youth, I have the blanket for you that's personalized and Thank embroidered. So and I always much. like to tell the students that um, when you wrap up in that, just think of it as a big hug from all of us here. We're thinking about you and praying for you. Oh, thank you. So, in fact, I understand that you have received the um, Al Wentz yeah. New Bethel United Methodist Church Scholarship, so congratulations on that. And your church family would like to also add to that as a, a scholarship from, from New Bethel. And this is for you in the amount of $425. Thank you so, so much. So to help you with that. Thank you. You have just blessed all of us all the time you've been here. We thank you for that. We just wish you the very best. Thank we should be you. proud of your accomplishments. We're proud of you, and we'll keep you in our prayers. And we're thinking of you in your new adventures next Thank year. Thank you so, so. much. Want, we will, do you mind kneeling there so we can say a blessing okay. over you? I want to invite our parents forward. Come on up, parents. We've got to have a prayer for your graduate. You join me? Well, we're going to like put our hands on her and okay. bless her. So. <laughs> Everybody, put a hand on her. Parents, you've done a wonderful job with this beautiful child of God. And Lydia, we're just very proud of you. And we want to pray God's blessing on you as you go. Dear God, we thank you so much for this beautiful child of light and grace and compassion and wonder. We thank you for her life, and we thank you for the plan that you have for her life. We're so proud of her, for her accomplishments thus far in life. She's been a joy, and she is kind and friendly to others. I've been on her with mission trips, Lord. We've seen her compassion. We've seen her hard work. She is um, she's just a, a beloved child of yours. And Lord, as we send her off now to college, we know that'll come in the fall, we just pray your continued blessings. We know that you're at work in her life. She will be faced with situations where she needs wisdom, and she will turn to you. She will be faced with situations where she needs discernment, and she will turn to you. She will be faced with situations where she needs encouragement and help, and we know, Lord, that Lydia will turn to you. Thank you for her life. Thank you for the promise and the potential and the joy and the plan that you have for her. And we send her off um, just knowing that she will, she will make this world a better place. We thank you for her, Lord, and ask your continued blessings on her life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Thank you so much. What a joy. Thank you. All right. Lydia Foster, friends. Yeah. Yeah. 
invite the choir to come forward at this time um, while I talk to you just a moment about the offering. We thank you for your wonderful support of the ministries of our church. Um, your giving makes things like scholarships to our seniors possible. That's just one of the many varied ministries that uh, your tithes and offerings support. We thank you for that support. We have a touchless offering box in the back. That's uh, We're not passing the plate these days. And then, of course, if you're worshiping with us online this morning, there are ways for you to give online, or you can get the address of the church and mail contributions in. So thank you very much.
have a, a special time of remembrance. Let me get this. Okay, are we back? Is that good? All right. Today we have a special time of remembrance. This is something we've done for several years. We're going to uh, read a name of someone associated with our church who has passed away in 2020. We had nine last year um, who were either members or constituents or close friends of the congregation who passed away in 2020. Um, and as we know, 2020 was a very difficult year. Our celebrations were limited. Um, and in a way, I think it kind of prolonged our grief and, and challenged our ability to get closure. And one of the things that we want to do today, this morning, is just remember those lives. We're going to ask you to bring flowers forward. We've already sent out letters to the families and some flowers are here. We have flowers, uh, the congregation members, some of you have flowers for each name that we'll call. And you just come forward when the name is called. Um, David will ring a bell as we remember that life. Um, Laura will light a candle as we remember that life. And as you're coming forward, you'll place your flower in the vase right here. And by the end of it, we'll just have a beautiful bouquet that represents for us um, the beauty and the joy and the sweet fragrance of their lives that continues to bless us as a congregation. Because even though many of our friends have gone on to heaven, um, we still are blessed by the memory of them and the things that we've learned from them and um, just the grace that we know God has shared with them. That is a blessing to us as well. So we begin, um, I think I had asked, if you have something to say, I, I think I had asked the family members if you wanted to say something about your loved one. You're welcome to come up here and do that um, when their name is read. The first one we remember is Dorothy Hamelos. I was very blessed to have my mother for 72 years, and it was such a gift to me. God gave me a beautiful, beautiful mother, full of love, full of joy, and we shared so much together, especially coming to this church. You are her family as well as you are mine. So I thank God for her life. I am glad her suffering is over, and I look forward to the time when I will see her again soon. Mildred Inez Overholtz. We called her Millie. I've been asked to remember Millie. I don't pretend to do the justice that Wayne or Judy would. Um, but when you think of Millie, you may remember her and how much she loved her family, especially as um, a devoted wife to her husband, John, and to her sons, Wayne and Jim. You may think of her creative skills as a quilter and later as a crocheter, creating works of love with her hands, you may even remember her as our church's year, leap year baby, who officially <laughs> celebrated her birthday every four years. But for my family, we will always remember her as a witness for Jesus, who shared and invited others into the church. And so I'm going to read something that my mom wrote um, in 2006 um, when we had done an Easter Lenten devotions book. And so this is what my mom had written as a tribute to Millie. A lovely lady named Millie Overholtz was very inspirational to my family nearly 26 years ago. So this is 1980. Um, it was a chance meeting at a local laundromat that changed our lives. 
we were looking for a church for our family. And as I mentioned this to Millie, she was so nice and invited us to the Methodist Church in Glen Carbon. We have never forgotten her and how she and her family were so kind to us. And we visited the church the very next Sunday on Easter of 1980. And all of the church family was very hospitable to us, which of course is our church family. We know that that hasn't changed. So part of Millie's legacy is not only her love for God and sharing that love with others, but she'll always be part of my family's faith journey and for that we'll always be grateful. Gail, Gail's mother went home to be with the Lord uh, last year, and also Gail's husband. We remember Gordon Miller. My husband was my best friend. We did almost everything together, including working together. We taught together at Granite City High School North, and then when we moved to one high school, we again continued. Uh, he was speech and theater. He was the first award winner of SIU's Outstanding Actor Award in 1962. He directed plays, he wrote plays, he taught at the university level, high school level, was a friend and mentor to thousands of students. We did musicals together, uh, acting in them, but especially directing them, and had a marvelous time. Uh, life and Alzheimer's took him away from me uh, sooner than his passing. So when I finally lost him last year, it was a great loss, but he had already, in a sense, gone home to God. I am so grateful that he is no longer suffering again and that he's happy. And I know I will see him when the time is right. God has blessed me and my wonderful family. We remember Donna Coots. Don and I were childhood sweethearts, and uh, I think uh, 60, uh, 60 years of friendship and 56 years of marriage. She was the love of my life, and uh, I do miss her. I want to thank everybody for the cards, the meals, the calls, the calls you made, and the visits. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Donna went home to be with the Lord gently with her husband by her side on May 17th. She was 73 years old. We remember Virgil William Pinkley.
Virgil was born in uh, Washington, D.C. That's Claire's son. He was the middle child and their only son. Uh, his father was also named Virgil. With his older sister Susan and his little sister Christy, they grew up in a home filled with faith, love, and lots of adventures. Um, Virgil got his bachelor's degree in horticulture from U of I, and then he lived and worked in California for a few years, and he got his master's in business from the Santa Clara University. When he returned to Edwardsville, he got a job at Frank's Nursery and Crafts in Fairview Heights, and he just loved that job. It used his horticultural training and his creativity and his good people skills. He was a talented landscaper, and he enjoyed gardening and golf and his family, and he was a car enthusiast, and his first classic car, he was very proud of this car, was a 1972 Porsche 911. <laughs> and he took his nephew for a ride in it one day, and the nephew got gum on it, so he wasn't thrilled with that. Um, Virgil went on to become the manager of the Dollar Tree in Granite City, and he was still working there when he went to the hospital after a fall, and they determined that he had um, advanced cancer, and Virgil went home to heaven on June 23rd. He was just 62 years old. Next, we want to remember Dorothy Mary Boucher. Uh, we called her Dottie. Dottie was married to Lester Immel Boucher, and they were blessed with two children, Andrea and Bryant. She became uh, a member of New Bethel Church. Uh, I'm not sure what year she joined. Um, she was a resident at the time of her death. She was a resident at Eden Village. Um, she lived there for many years before she went home to heaven on June 26th, and she was 87 years old. We also remember... This morning, Trina Harris. <laughs> Trina married Walter Brian Harris. On September 25th, 1993, they were blessed with three children, Christopher, Zach, and Lexi. Trina loved being a wife to Walt and a mother to her kids. She was fun and loving, kind-hearted. She always saw the good in people. She was good-humored and forgiving. She was encouraging, a supporter. She was a people person who uh, generally cared about others and made life fun. She died very suddenly on August 8th, she was only 48 years old, and it's been hard on her family, but God is making a way for them and for us, even in our grief. So we praise God for, for her life. The next person we want to remember this morning is Glenn E. Burlingame. Glenn was born in Miller County, Missouri, in a little cabin on the Lake of the Ozarks. He had four brothers and two sisters, and Glenn was one of the middle kids. When he was little, the family moved here to Glen Carbon, where his father worked as a union carpenter. Uh, Glenn himself eventually became a, a carpenter as well. 
Glenn went to grade school with one of our members, Bev Jones, and then Glenn and Bev and another of our members, Mike Mycamp, all went to high school together, and in these last few years, they would talk about their reunions and the good old days. Glenn told me once that he had a job as a caddy at the country club when he was in high school. He got paid 35 cents a round. There were only nine holes at first. He always wanted to play it when they made it 18 holes, but he never got over there and played 18. But he did play on the golf team in high school. He was on the basketball team too. Glenn, uh, if you knew Glenn, Glenn was very tall. I think he's one of only two people that that couch out in the lobby fits. Because <laughs> he was so tall, his feet could reach the, the bottom. But uh, Glenn had um, just a, a wonderful presence here at the church. Um, he wasn't raised in church, but uh, being married to Sally, uh, well, her, her Christian life and her faith and devotion to Jesus um, soaked into Glenn over the course of their marriage, over their many years together. Sally joined New Bethel in 2001, and after a few years, Glenn started coming with Sally, and the Hardys group and others in the church embraced him with open arms, and through all of that, God was at work drawing Glenn to Jesus. Um, he started coming to worship, and in December of 2012, Glenn stood before the congregation and confessed Christ as his Lord and Savior. So very important. On Sunday, August 23rd, 2020, Sally and their boys all saw Glenn, sat with him and talked with him and said their goodbyes. And later that afternoon, Jesus came and took Glenn home to heaven. He was 87 years old. We thank God for his life. The next person we want to remember this morning is Bob Parrish. down if you're comfortable so we okay. can understand you always <laughs> <laughs> Bob and I were very very happy to find the church we were able to be here uh, he's just been gone for seven months now and we found the church immediately when we uh, came over to uh, Meridian Meridian, Meridian. And uh, searching for the Methodist Church, uh, we just came up from um, uh, O'Fallon o area. So it yeah. wasn't long. Uh, his, uh, we had many places to live, um, being a uh, uh, military family, so. We loved this woman when we <laughs> heard her. <laughs> Thank you. And all the people that are sitting in the in the, in the, uh, the group that that I'm watching, and I want to thank you all. Uh, it meant so much to Bob, and um, it wasn't that long that uh, we were able to to love to find to love. So. <coughs> Thanks to everybody.
in this woman too. <laughs> Sweet her, Gail. Her mama was living where I was, and we were able to play games together and love each other. And oh yes, that she loved you. To love her. <laughs> Just help her down, Larry. Thank you. Okay. Larry. Yeah, Larry will help. Her. There we go. <laughs> Uh, I do want to add to, to what Ann said. Bob was born and raised in Manhattan, Kansas, and he and Ann were both proud graduates of Kansas State University. All right. Um, at the age of 17, Bob enlisted in the Kansas Army National Guard. He served seven years, at which time he was discharged as a sergeant first class to serve in the Air Force. He married Ann in 1961, and the Lord blessed them with two children, Stephen and Susan. As a military family, they moved around quite a bit, but they made that work. Bob always loved watching the Kansas City Royals. And after retirement in Illinois, um, we were able to shift him to become a great Cardinals fan. So that was, that was good. Bob was very proud of his 30 years of service as an officer in the Air Force. He was a patriot and a highly decorated veteran of the Vietnam War and Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm. He retired as a colonel at his last command at Scott Air Force Base. And he went home to heaven on September 7th. He was 82 years old. We miss Bob. Next, we remember our fallen military, those who have passed away serving our country in 2020. At this time, we would open the microphone over here to near Harvey is open and on. If you have someone else in your family that has passed away in the last year, you're welcome to come forward and state that name and add a flower and we'll light a candle as long as we have candles. Um, Kathy, see what Wayne years ago, they still consider this their home church, and uh, I so appreciate all the prayers that were sent for Tim and Jason and the boys, and all the cards that were sent, especially by uh, Pat Boyce, who never missed a week, sending Tim a card, and it meant so much to know that she was still remembered here. When I'm in church, I can't forget Tim, because every year, or every day when we say the closing, when we get to the part, hold on to something good, someone would always grab me. And then return no one evil for evil, she would poke me. <laughs> Thanks so much for all the prayer. <laughs> Thank you. 
Howard asked that I use the microphone. My flower is for Sedona Brister. Uh, worked with Sally Burlingame at at and years and years ago, and she was a soul sister to Gail and me, and died earlier this year at the age of 72. And she was also a surrogate aunt to Ralph's and my girls, Alexia and Aaron, and took them all over the United States and Europe. So she had children, not, did not have children of her own, but embraced those of others. My flower is for my one girlfriend that I met in seventh grade, and we had been friends all through high school. We graduated together. She was a W. I was a W. We sat right next to one another. Her name is Sean Weaver. My flower is for Jeffrey Litterist. He is the father of my closest friend. Um, he was unfortunately, he lost his life to uh, COVID-19 in March at the young age of 52, leaving behind his wife, um, his daughter, my friend, and his son, Adam. Uh, so I just, I've appreciated how the church family has rallied around, um, you know, myself and other people who are close with that family. Uh, and I just ask for prayers for them, especially their children who are, you know, still going through school, still figuring life out, and deeply miss their father. Flowers for my brother, Bob Hewlin. He died at, six, at the age of 63 in August. Um, he was a fun-loving guy. He loved sports. He loved to travel. He had so many friends. Not much money, but very many friends. <laughs> I love him to death. Shelly. Shelly. My flower is for my sister's husband, George Mesa, my brother-in-law, who died in February. Thank you for sharing with us the names of those that you love. I'm sure that there are many more that we could name, but this is a powerful time for us as we sit in worship just to be reminded that the love and the grace of God holds dear and takes care of those that we love, even when they pass from this life. And in the context of our worship, what a blessing it is to remember that death is not the end of us. It is an ending, but it's not the end. And we die as those who go forth to live and that brings us great peace. It brings us great hope. It brings us uh, joy as we remember these lives that have ended on earth, but continue with our heavenly father. Would you join me in prayer? Oh, gracious and loving God, we do thank you for this memorial celebration. It is a celebration, Lord. We, we've cried a few tears as we remember. Our memories and our grief is still fresh and our hearts are tender. But Lord, we are filled with faith as we sit in this beautiful sanctuary. As we, as we worship in your presence, we know that you hold safely the lives of these that we have remembered and named. 
We thank you for that. And we look forward to the time when we will be with them again in your heavenly kingdom. Continue to bless us, Lord. And continue to bless those who are continuing to grieve, um, as we've said, trying to figure out how to move forward when we still desperately miss those that have gone. But Lord, you do make a way for us, and we thank you for that. Help us to continue to be a strong, supportive church family that reaches out and invites and loves on and surrounds with grace and faith and help all the people that you send our way. In the name of Christ, we thank you. Amen.